Some of the tools we use are really cool, okay? They just are. Uh, satellite, meteorological satellite is awesome, okay? We can look at anywhere in the world at any point in time and see where the clouds are, um, what the temperature of the cloud tops are, or where the moisture is in the atmosphere. Any time of day, anywhere in the world, we can see this sort of stuff and it's a very good clue as to what we can expect in this one particular slide here that comma looking cloud shape right there in the center the main feature there is a low pressure system that's well wrapped up it's occluded it's mature and it's about to hit the it's already impacting the western portions of the united states and, and canada okay low pressure system i didn't have to look at a weather map i can just look at the satellite and boom there it is pretty cool weather radar Unlike satellite, weather radar actually uses radio waves to basically ping off of hydrometeors or raindrops or snowflakes in the atmosphere and return it to the radar, the radar base and uh, sends it to the meteorologist. Anybody who's got a, a radio, even on your phone, you can pull up a radar, okay? Meteorologists don't look at any different radar products than anybody else could look at, okay? We might have different programs that maybe show it a little bit differently, okay? But it's the same radar. We don't have access to special radar that the general public generally wouldn't have access to okay it's the same thing we just might have different visuals or might have a few more features that um, will allow us to interrogate the storm we call it interrogate the storms but you know take a deeper look into the storms this is a picture of san antonio airport uh, base reflectivity is the is on the left hand side where base velocity is on the right hand side and we're looking at a thunderstorm that caused uh, a tornado I, I don't remember exactly what size tornado i think maybe an f1 or an f2 tornado near the san antonio airport but this is looking at at the same radar anybody in san antonio would look at okay uh, there's all sorts of different features on our radars we can see how tall the storms are we can get a good idea of what sort of precipitation is falling whether it's it's hail it's uh, rain it's snow a combination of all of that we can see dust storms on them now which is pretty cool we can see smoke we can see all sorts of cool stuff so anyway that's that's where we use our weather radar uh, the United States is really good. We have a lot of weather radar. There, there is still a few places in the U.S. that we can't see very well. Um, but other parts of the world, a lot of places, they don't have weather radar. So uh, they have to revert a lot back to satellite to see what the weather is uh, going on. Airport weather observations are a big thing in the United States. And they're starting to be a bigger thing in other developed countries as well. Uh, in more third world countries or underdeveloped countries, airport weather observations are, are rather sparse. But in the United States, it seems like just about every town has got a small airport and there's, there's a weather observation nearby. Some of these airport weather observations are manned. Uh, so there's actually a meteorologist or a weather observer behind the observation to ensure that it's providing the most uh, clear and accurate weather okay and then some of them are just automated systems fancy expensive weather sensors that do it all by themselves they're generally not as accurate but they, they do provide some useful information a lot of times when you pull up weather on your phone you say well what's the weather in Dallas Texas it's gonna pull up uh, a weather observation that was originated from an airport not all the apps do that but but some of them do and generally those are the most accurate that you're gonna get especially from larger airports Weather balloons are also extremely valuable. I had a whole semester course in college just on weather balloons and how to read all the data from them. You'd think, wow, I mean, a balloon, that's a, that's a kid's toy. Uh, you're teaching college classes on it. Yeah, it's actually an extremely valuable tool that we use. These weather balloons are rather expensive. Uh, they're one-time use but uh, they contain a, a sensor pack on them that can be very valuable to understanding what the atmosphere looks like as the balloon goes all the way up. And they can go up past 100,000 feet too. They, they go really high up there. They will tell us what the winds are as they go all the way up with height. They'll also give us the temperature and the relative humidity that we can then calculate the dew point with. And we can calculate how stable or unstable the atmosphere is. And that's just huge to determining if we're going to see thunderstorms or any sort of severe weather. We can see where all the clouds are as we go up with height. Okay, because sometimes maybe there's a low clouds and it's blocking our view from any clouds that are above it. Right. But the weather balloon is going to be able to give us that information. 
when I was working in aviation meteorology, these were huge too. They chose where the turbulence was and where any icing would be for the aircraft. Uh, anything that would impact flight, uh, these weather balloons are extremely valuable. They're sent up twice a day, sometimes more often, but, but uh, regular schedule is twice a day. They're somewhat sparsely located. I think there's about 100 or so places uh, in the United States. Uh, and then there's there's several other uh, countries in, in the world that do this. So they'll give us a good snapshot of what's going on at least twice a day. And then meteorologists use computer models. Computer models are great. They are obviously computer-based. A lot of them use statistics or some sort of mathematical formulas, very complicated mathematical formulas. They have to run on supercomputers to even print this stuff out. But they'll give us ideas of what the temperature is going to be like, where the weather is going to be, where the rain, thunderstorms, what the wind flow is going to be like at all sorts of different levels in the atmosphere. They'll give us statistics that we need. They're basically the, the catalyst of all that other information that we just looked at. The computer is just trying to figure it out. Now, there's all sorts of different weather forecast models. Sometimes they even contradict each other. <laughs> it happens all the time. And so meteorologists still have to go in and try to figure out which one they trust more and which one they want to go with. Sometimes we average them together. Sometimes we just completely throw one out and say, I'm not going to even look at this one today because it's out to lunch. So the meteorologist is still very important because we've got to decipher all this information. But these are certainly helping us figure out at least what course of action we should take with our forecast. Some of these models can go out over a month, but most forecasts are only accurate within about a week to 10 days. I've heard some uh, models can be used with generally good confidence out to even like two or three weeks. I haven't seen that personally, but I've read some articles about it. I know that that the models that, that I generally look at and use, if they're performing rather nicely, uh, I can see a good five days, maybe even seven days into the future and make a reasonable forecast based on that. Sometimes more uh, and sometimes less. It really depends on the location and how active the weather patterns are.